But we've had some great messages over the last couple of weeks, and I just want to recap a couple of things. At the beginning of the uh, year when we came back, we talked about being planted. Where are you planted? Where are you planted? Where are your roots down? Because if our roots aren't down, we're not going to bear any fruit. And God's into increase and fruitfulness. The kopapa of heaven, increase in fruitfulness. Those revivals, they're just... If you see the, the clips, I was hoping going to mention baptisms. I just saw an ocean full of people, just streams and lines up and lines of people going to the ocean to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Bring it on. Come on, Lord. We want that in our nation. So uh, God's dream, God's plan is to populate heaven. Say populate heaven. God's plan is to populate heaven. There's only one way, and that's to have people born again. The only way to heaven is to be born again. Read John chapter 3. You'll get it right there. Born again. Pastor Penny, wherever he's escaped to, he preached a great word the other day about being, uh, taking your position, checking your position, and staying in your position. And then last week we had uh, Pastor Adam, uh, try that again, Pastor Andrew, uh, was that prophetic? Uh, Pastor Andrew. Did you say pathetic? Okay. We had Pastor Andrew from uh, Rotorua here. And wh where was he uh, speaking from? Living well. About what topic, not what's the name of his church. I went, did you make a connection? This man was preaching his vision. In our house, how dare he? Why do you think he calls his church living well? He talked about Abraham and his mates, Doug. You know Doug? Doug again? Yeah, he talked a lot about those guys, Doug. They dug again the wells of faith. Worship. What a great word. I wasn't even here to hear it. I know it was a great word. Doug again, the wells of faith and worship and prayer. I really believe that there's great opportunity for us in 2023. And uh, the doors of opportunity will open. We're going to have to take some risks. We're going to have to step out. We're going to have to trust God. This morning, let's put my sermon notes up here. Thank you. Wake this thing up. What's holding you? I put this up here this morning because I thought I'd get a small rope. Let's swap it for my microphone, it's that big. Have any of you ever come to the end of your rope? <laughs> Looks like that. I, uh, I also invested in my own rope, but I didn't know if you'd be able to see it. It's a little bit smaller. And, and I was afraid that you might not be able to see that. I want to talk about standing firm, similar to what Pastor Penny was talking about. Uh, the Bible has a verse that talks about a three-fold cord, a three-fold cord. Often when we talk about the three-fold cord, you think of what? Where have you heard the verse about the threefold cord? Weddings. Weddings. Never used the threefold cord message at a funeral. Well, I haven't. Uh, 20 years ago, I used this message at uh, a wedding. Those of you that were around long enough, Bramwell. The threefold cord. Not easily broken. And uh, here it is from Ecclesiastes 4, verse 12. And though one may be overpowered, two can resist. Moreover, a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Uh, this is a bit of a jumble in here. Let me see. What's holding you? 
What's holding you? Let's have that next slide. What's holding you? That's an incomplete sentence. Next slide, please. That's an incomplete sentence. I want you to finish it with me. What's holding you? Give me a word. Oh, hang on. It's one at a time. Put your hand up. What's holding you together? Yeah. What's holding you? And you know the answer is skin, right? Okay. What's holding you? We said together. What's holding you back? Someone called out. What's holding you up? Come on, come on, think creatively. Those of you that are awake, help me with my sermon. What would, what's holding you down? Okay, what's holding you down? How else could this look? What's holding you in place? Thinking, 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 thinking. What's holding you firm? Yeah, we got, you're using synonyms now. I can see where you're going with this. What's holding you? <laughs> the class is out of order. What do I do? What do I do? What was that? What's holding you captive? Wow. I want to change my sermon now. That's good. What's holding you captive? What's holding you in tough times? What's holding you in the battle? Hmm. What's holding you back? I did hear someone call that before, but I wanted it to come last. Let's go to the next slide. What's holding you back? See, life is a journey of twists and turns, ups and downs, gains and losses. Amen? We are always and forever moving and changing. We grow and we go. We grow and we go. Transition seldom, ha- seldom, I can't get the email, seldom happens without tension. Transition seldom happens without tension. Discomfort and unsettledness. Life at its best involves risk and recovery. Come on, quote me this week, somebody. Life at its best involves risk and recovery. Setbacks are stepping stones to the next level. Do you remember in your younger years, learning things like riding your truck? Scary. Three wheels. You're learning to ride your truck. Then you advance to what? You ride your bike. Well done. You went from riding your trike. You took a risk. You took a tumble and a fall, right? Anybody still got the scars? <laughs> You parted with one wheel. You went from your trike to your bike. Did anyone advance? Anyone on a uni cycle? You ride a uni cycle? If I knew that, I would have had a demonstration right now. Do you remember going from junior school to intermediate or from intermediate to senior school? Wasn't that scary times? I mean, risk and recovery... You had to leave those friends behind, and uh, you had to, you know, my grandson just went from a school where there's probably only 200 in the whole school, into a big school where there's 200 in his class. And he had to make all new friends, and he comes home, how did your day go? It's scary, because life is like that. Life is always pushing us to the next level. Life is always about taking risks and often about recovery. I'm so glad that the Lord doesn't leave us when we fall over. Psalm 37 and verse 23 and 24, it says this, the steps of a man are ordered by the Lord. Change man for person. 
who takes delight in his journey. Though he falls, he will not be overwhelmed, for the Lord is holding his hand. Revised Standard Version, the steps of the Lord, are, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, though he fall, he shall not be cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Do you want me to sing it? <laughs> Mr. Ferry knows it. Mr. Pritchard knows it. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, though he fall. See, in life, in our journey of faith, we take steps. And sometimes, as we take steps, we do exactly what happened when we were learning to walk. We trip up. We fall over. We lose balance. But I want to tell you today that the Lord is there for us. And no matter whether we fall or we take a step and it's successful, the Lord will pick us up. The Lord will pick us up. Sometimes life is more like this. Can you see that? Is this going? Can I have this mic? Can you hear me? All right, I'll leave a hand. I'll leave a hand. When you see that, what do you think? What do you think of? Sometimes life has a way of unraveling us or unraveling all around us. And before we know it, we can find ourselves um, um, stranded. I wanted to do this for the big black rope, the guy that owns the rope through me. Sometimes we're getting so close to the so close to the end of our everything. This is quite strong. Has anyone been there? Come on, I've been there. I have been there. You think pastors are exempt from this? What did Pastor uh, Andrew say at his ministries in the evening, directing at, at the leadership? He said, you want to have troubles? Step into leadership. I heard him say it. It wasn't going to happen. He said, if you want to have trouble, step into leadership. You think leaders are exempt from this? No, 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 no. We get a lot of chafing. A lot of chafing. It's a whole lot stronger than I am. But it's, uh, it's working. Right? What do you do? I mean, we love the word of the Lord that says, and the threefold cord is an easily broken. But what do you do when that's your life? And worst of all, what do you do? You know, when we go into things like COVID isolation and we face all kinds of sometimes they aren't even things that we see coming. Sometimes things happen in our life and it's our best friend that does that. Sometimes it's a promise that's broken. Sometimes it's the expectation we have that's not fulfilled. Sometimes it's a dream that crashes. Whatever it is, when we get to this point, we're in trouble. Sometimes we decide that we can just put a band-aid on. You with me? It's like, how are you? Do not get me. The band-aid doesn't last. It certainly doesn't strengthen and it doesn't repair what's happening in our life. Band-aid's only good for looks. Yeah. Oh, I like it. 
See, what's holding you? What's holding you? What's holding you strong? What's holding you in the battle? What's holding you when life gets to that place that you just want to give up? See, our land has a terrible statistic for suicide. When people get to that point where it's like, you know, it's not worth living. And they don't know how to do a sheep shank in their life. They don't know how to get others around them. They don't know that their life was created to be uh, connected with other people. And they're in isolation. One of the worst things about the isolation we had through COVID, it made people extremely vulnerable, emotionally vulnerable. We got out of our good routines. We got out of fellowship. We got out of connection. As soon as you get out of connection, there's a chafing going on. So what's holding you? Hey, I I better use a bit more scripture today. I want to talk from uh, Exodus chapter 17. If you go there, you'll see it. It's not coming up on the screen. Oh, there it is. One verse. We're going to go, uh, I'm going to talk into it first. Uh, The start of this chapter, the children of Israel have come out into the desert and they're having a conversation about how they had no water. Isn't that an interesting topic? They were thirsty. They couldn't dig a well. They were, and so they started to what? Who did they complain against? The leader. The leader's being picked on. Moses is under fire because you brought us out here. We all celebrated the thought of being free, and now there's no water. And so in the midst of this, Moses does what he always knew to do, and he's turned to God. To God, what am I going to do? God gives them the solution. Take the rod, the authority I gave you, and strike the rock. And water came out. And then a little bit later in the chapter, that's where we're going to join in. Verse 11. They're in another situation where they're in battle. Joshua's leading the battle under Moses' command. And Moses says, you go fight the battle, and I'm going to go and worship the Lord. I'm going to hold my hands up. I'm going to praise his name. And the Bible says that as long as he had his hands up, they were winning. But whenever his hands became heavy or tired, the battle went to the enemy. So what was the solution? 
I mean, I don't know if you've ever tried to do this. Have you ever just tried to stay with your hands up? 10 minutes? 12 minutes? Half an hour? They're just going to drop. This battle takes half the day. So Moses is struggling. He's coming to the end of his rope. He, he can't hold his hands up indefinitely. So what's the solution? Some guys. What are their names? Forgotten. Aaron and Hur position themselves alongside of their leader, Moses, and hold up his hands. Are you getting the message? For us to stay strong, for us to stay in battle, for us to hold our place, for us to continue in our faith, the reality is we need other people around us. We need to lock ourselves in to connections that are strong. We need to find other people that can hold up our hands when we're in battle. Yes? See, because a threefold cord is not easily broken. I want to encourage you with this this morning, that we totally need one another. We need relationships. Of course, we need relationship with God. But we really need to get into good connections with others that can strengthen us. So that when we find ourselves in this situation that life is pulling us apart, we don't come unraveled. We have something that will strengthen us and hold us up. I'm going to invite the keyboarders to come back. Thank you. So the battle was won when Moses was again able to be strengthened and hold up his hands. I don't know what your battle is. Your battle and my battle are probably very different things. They might not be. We all battle with some very common things. Doubts and fears. What's your battle? And what's holding you strong at this time? What's holding you strong as you face life, as you take the next step, as you take a risk when you need to recover from falling down, when you seemingly come to the end of your rope? What's holding you strong? Hey, this morning I want to finish my short message by pointing something out that's also threefold. The God we serve, the God we love, the God that loves us. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, triune God. Threefold cord, not easily broken. This is an interesting thing. He created us in His image. And why we are triune as well. Body, soul, spirit. God the Trinity created human the Trinity. Threefold cord, not easily broken. And I want to say this to you today. In understanding our creation, let me untie this. Interesting fact, this knot only holds together under tension. Transition always creates tension. This knot falls to bits if it's not under tension. That's why it works for marriages, by the way. You're distracting me. When God created us, I want you to think of God as this middle strand. He made us out of himself. God the Father. But then he knew that we would come undone. He knew that this was going to happen. And so he created another part, and that's God the Son, to come around us, to heal us, to set us free. And then he didn't finish there because when Jesus left the earth after performing miracles and speaking of heaven, he said, I'm sending the comforter. It's going to come around you. He's going to be there for you. Third strand, 
We've got the Father, we've got the Son, third strand. Holy Spirit. I want to tell you today, it's not enough for us to live on our own. We need to know the Father, His call, His purpose. We need to know the Son, His redempting power in our life. We need to know the Holy Spirit. That's the plan of salvation right there a broken life that was once created by the father that has been surrounded by Jesus and his plan of redemption and has been finished to the destiny of heaven by the Holy Spirit I want to ask you this morning do you know this God do you know this way? Do you know this plan? I don't want you to go away today without knowing the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in your life. I'm going to invite the worship team to come back. We've got a moment for a quick song. I want to invite you this morning, if you don't know Jesus, if you haven't surrendered your life, if you haven't come to that place where you say, oh yeah, I can't do it on my own. This morning, don't go home without having the comfort of God, the strength, the provision of God. Jesus has made a way for you. Amen. Let me pray. And then I'm going to invite the worship team to lead. Thank you, Jesus, that when my life was broken, you came and fixed it up. That you strengthened me. Each one of us that knows you can say amen to that. Amen to the Holy Spirit coming changing our lives so amazingly. I want to thank you this morning that you didn't discard us just because we were stranded and broken, but that you reached out, did something for us to strengthen us and save us.